Fran Charles back with you and an electric full sail live as we get set to find out who John Jackson will face in our Super Walter Wade tournament. It is Jorge Cota getting set to take on Udell Johnson, and that's right now. On his way to the ring, Jorge Demonio Cota. Jorge Cota from Los Mochis, Mexico, 24 and one with 22 knockouts, has only fought in Mexico, but there are two familiar names here. He defeated a 40 year old former champ, Yuri Boy Campus, and also he lost a top 10 middleweight contender, Marco Antonio Rubio back in 2012, but make no mistake about it, there's thunder here in the fist of Cota. Absolutely, you know, he doesn't have much of an amateur background, so a lot of his learning has been on the job as a pro. But he's been doing a good job, 22 knockouts out of 24 fights. Now making his way to the ring, you dead. Johnson. Udell Johnson is a southpaw from Havana, Cuba. He now lives in Miami, 17 and one with nine KOs. How about this, Austin? 395 amateur bouts. And his highlight won the 2004 silver medal at the Olympics. Absolutely, he's almost the opposite. He did all his learning on the job as an amateur, and now he's trying to transfer that into the professional race. He has gone five and zero since his last loss, which came back in 2012 to another fighter we've seen here on Premier Boxing Champions, Willie Nelson. Nelson won a decision in ten rounds. Time now for a tale of the tape, brought to you by the new film, straight out of Compton between Johnson and Coda. And so Coda, there you see, has the seven-year age advantage, although they've both been fighting for about the same number of years, six plus there. And Coda, six one. But it is Johnson who has the reach advantage, and both fighters, uh, they made our 154-pound limit. Time now for the official introductions. Let's send it over to Ray Flores. Live on Bounce TV from Full Sail Live, Premier Boxing Champions now features 10 rounds in the Super Welterweight Division. The three judges ringside are Alex Levin, Thomas Nardone, and William Ray. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds Telus Asimenios in the red corner wearing the purple and the silver. His professional record, 24 wins, 22 of those by way of knockout. Opposite one defeat from Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. This is Jorge Demonio Cota. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the Cuban flag as a professional. His record stands at 17 wins. Nine of those coming by way of knockout against one defeat, fighting out of Havana, Cuba. Presenting Udell Johnson. Johnson and Coda set to do battle, so the referee, Telesan Semenios, will deliver the instructions as he waves both fighters to the center of the ring. Gentlemen, you have received instructions to the dressing room, so obey my commands at all times, protect yourselves at all times. Shake hands, good luck, and God bless. So uh, Johnson is a fighter who paused with that right jab, and he relies solely on his left hand for power. He's got a, a good left uppercut, so that should be something that we should watch tonight. And for Coda, tall and rangy, but he does fight straight up. He carries his left hand low, his right hand high. Time! And he as well, as we saw John Jackson do it earlier, he'll occasionally switch to southpaw. But uh, there you see it is Johnson, who is a southpaw in this fight. And Johnson comes out right away. Oh, nice uh, right hand here from Coda. And so both these fighters early on 
in the getting to know each other process, not afraid to let go of their hands either, Austin. Right. Cota with a nice right hand. Stanley looks Johnson like just momentarily, Johnson was a little stunned. And Johnson now looks like trying to just hold on and regain his composure. 24 and 1 with 22 knockouts. And we did mention, look, all the fights have been in Mexico, but you know, you're never sure about the competition across the board, but 22 knockouts, you're doing something right. Well, we could see that he's got power because you know it didn't look like those those punches had much stank on him, but it definitely definitely got uh, Johnson's attention. Interesting thing about Cota from Mexico, the Sinaloa region, and he didn't start boxing until he was 20 years of age, turned pro at 22. That's ancient for that part. Cota has caught Johnson more than a few times, but then Johnson also was able to rough up Cota as well. So early on, just a, a buck 30 in here, and we are seeing some pretty good action here in the first round. Johnson misses there with the left hand. Ninety-seven total round. Good body oh, shot. Big shot there from Johnson, and Johnson staggers Cota, uh -huh. and then catches him with the right hand. Yeah, I think he's got Cota's attention. So we have seen both fighters stunned momentarily oh. in this first hand, and Johnson has Cota in trouble in the corner. Winds up, catches him with two left hands. You know, those headshots were set up by good body shots. Big shot. right hand from oh, Johnson oh. and a big left as well. Udell Johnson throwing right. roundhouse right. punches and connecting. Cota right. looking to get his feet under him. The knock on Udell Johnson as he misses with that left hand. Stop, stop, and a few punch. times he's missed during the, the first round. The knock on him is that sometimes he can start slowly and he's not quite as aggressive. Well, evidently, he's stop, been working stop. on that. Stop. As Asimenios comes in and tells Johnson, keep the blows up now. Nice first round here between Jorge Cota and Udell Johnson as both fighters, they continue to fire away uh -oh. at the end of the battle. Oh, okay. A couple of friendly hellos here, Austin. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Good overhand left by Johnson. Cotto took it well. He said to come back, but uh, we got a fight on our hands. Oh, we most certainly do. Premier Boxing Champions, the next round here on Bounce TV. And what a debut. Johnson comes right back with a straight left after he looked like he was momentarily rocked from a left hand from Cotto. Johnson 17 and 1 with. Nine KOs. We told you about the 22 knockouts at the hands of Jorge Cota. Johnson lunges. Tell you what, these two guys just traded four shots right there. Tit for tat. You know, I think Johnson's more effective upstairs when he starts down at the body. He goes down and then comes up. He catches him right. cleanly. And Johnson also seems just a tad bit quicker yeah. as well. Well, you know, I think that's the experience and, and knowing where to place it. But Coda, to his credit, for, for basically not having an amateur pedigree, he's right there with him. And look, you know, you know Johnson as Coda misses there. And Johnson comes back. And, and again, Coda, he says, keep him up now. You know, Coda has a real awkward style sure to, to have to deal with. And it works for him. Well, his base is wide. Johnson not afraid to unleash the power shots. Oh, nice right hand that time from Cota. I tell you what, from coming from the Cuban boxing school, he does not fight like his uh, his ex teammates bring it down. All right, you know he, he's right there in your face. Not saying anything's wrong with no, him. No, absolutely right, not. Right, down right. Style. It's just it's much different. But the, the, we talked about the, the amateur background, and that, that's that great Cuban pedigree. I mean, they, they take, obviously, amateur boxing uh, incredibly seriously over in Cuba and have delivered some great amateur champions. He told us he started watching boxing at the age of nine, 
in Cuba in the neighborhood ring on wheels. It was kind of a touring, <laughs> you know, right, right. boxing match. I found that very interesting. Absolutely. They called it a finca, right? Finca, yes. Yeah, finca. Johnson getting loose here with the jab and hoping maybe that will open up some more activity. Coda as well. Haven't seen a whole lot of jabs here early on in this fight. Johnson jumps back from that straight right from Coda. Both these fighters looking to do damage early. And these first two rounds have been power packed. It's some good stuff. Johnson missed there. Coda misses as well. But it doesn't deter either fighter from continuing to fire away. Dorian Wilson and Jack K. Harry starred an all-new Bounce TV original comedy about a barbershop family of dysfunction and funny. In the Cut premieres Tuesday, August 25th on Bounce TV, as close as I've been to a barbershop in many years. <laughs> I like the dude, man. Yeah, I like the dude. It looks like Johnson just got touched up there at the shop. He's got the, uh, the high-top fade working. So trying to work out some of these power shots as well. Again, with Cotum bending back as he does, you know, when Johnson goes straight for the head, he's going to miss. But when he starts at the base, and chop the tree down, it, it, it nullifies the head movement, as you see. Johnson goes down, and then he comes back up. A little off balance, though, Austin, it seems. Like a little, little wild here for, for Johnson, though. Yeah, I'd agree, but again, he's trying a very awesome fight. Good shot. Tough overhand left from Johnson. Coda thought he was doing work from the body, and bam. Johnson came from down south and delivered that overhand left. Good body shot. Kicks to the body again. Then Johnson hits Coda with a right hand. Kona trying to hold on here. And then Johnson with a chopping shot to the back. And Telis Asimenio says, not here, not tonight. Udell Johnson going for it, no doubt. Good body shot. Sure was. Switching to southpaw now. Sure did. I tell you what, he looks a little wobbly, but it's interesting, jump, like you said, jump. because he's okay, awkward, you, you can't jump. tell necessarily. Right. If he's wobbly, if that's just how he walks. Because he caught a good shot to the gut. Thanks. Good sportsmanship there as Dakota touched Johnson there with a quick one, too. Johnson nods. Good body head. shot from Dakota. Is it to say, all right, you got okay. me. All right, so Coda goes to work, four punch combination, and you can tell that Johnson loves that overhand left. Nice. Left commits to it. Again. Commits to it. Digs in. Oh, jump, good. Jump, all right. good. Spin out. So you like that. You I think did. that's good? I thought that was a good move. Right These guys are committing to punishing blows here. Through three here at full sail live. Oh, no. Johnson goes down and out of the ring. And they're calling it not a, they're not calling it a knockdown. Wow. I have to Holy get another smokes. look at that. We will definitely have call. to get an, another look at that. Then again, it might have been after the bell. I'm not sure. Well, that that is very interesting as we're gonna dial up a replay here. And look, if he goes down because of the force of a blow. It was it was definitely a shot, but was it after the bell is the question. It was that check hook right there that had him hurt. And I believe it was a shot, but was it before or after the bell? That's close, I don't know. Wow, here we that is close. Let's bring in our PBC boxing historian, Steve Farhood. Steve, what'd you think there? Very important to understand the rule. The judges, despite what they may think of the knockdown, on their scorecards have to score it the way the ref called it. So if you're a judge and you're convinced that was a knockdown, you can't call it a knockdown. So basically it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's a 10-9 round if, if 
first. Which one? I'm not sure. It's a close round. I tell you what, and, and these rounds have been tough to score, so that could be a pivotal moment in this fight because that was razor close in the third round there. Nice straight left hand from Cotto. We certainly will revisit that situation at the end of the third round where Jorge Cota thought he had a knockdown to, to end the round as you saw Johnson spiral outside the ropes. But Elise Asimenios said no knockdown, came after the bell. Noticing Cota's fighting out of the southpaw stance more and more. And he is being effective, extremely effective, that one-two especially. The guys, remember, Cota's only lost once. And that was in 2012 to, I believe, Rubio. Fight got stopped in the seventh round, but he got cut in the third round. I, you know, we wondered how much that affected him. He said not much. You know Johnson. When he throws that overhand left, I mean, he brings it from Florida and takes it all the way through to California. Man, that was a great shot. And shout out to Cotto for taking that shot. It's sure still standing. Did. Are you surprised that Cotto can't see that? Because it seems like it takes so long to get there. Well, I don't know. He, he's got good speed on him, you know? Yep. And it's wild Cotto's punches, so, you know, that could yep. be probably why he's not so reactive to it. Going for broke here at Full Sail Live are stop, Jorge stop, Cota stop. and Udell Johnson. And they want to take full advantage. Nice uppercut there by Johnson. And they want to take full advantage of the opportunity as Premier Boxing Champions brings boxing back to free TV. Guys. They're clinched up, but they uh, they trade shots there to the body. A little tap here won't hurt. Oh, oh big overhand left from Coda. And Johnson again nods as if to right, say, right. you got me. Both these guys showing that good they beards. both have good chins. Yeah, good beards on both guys. I think Johnson needs to go back to the body. Great. Stop, 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 stop. No hope. Tell you what, we could not have asked for, for much more here on our debut here on Bounce TV. Time, time. And there's the bell again. And Asimenios makes sure the fighters separate and go to the corners. A lot of energy here being exerted early on, Fred and Austin, between these two game fighters. Well, they skipped the hors d'oeuvres and went right to the main course <laughs> from, the, from the beginning of this fight. I mean, it, nothing subtle about it. Both guys on the attack. We knew that coming in. Uh, but the fact that both of them have been able to take shots like that and come back and, and keep ticking is, is kind of incredible and a testament to both of them. In the so, end, the fans win. Yeah. All right, time now for our fourth round scorecard brought to you by the new film straight out of Compton. Steve well, Farhood, well. what do you have, sir? I think it's a very interesting fight to score. There have been so many big power shots. First round, third round, fourth round, all pretty close. Second round was clearly Johnson's. So uh, this could be a little tighter than I have it on my card. Exciting, good stuff here at Full Sail Live in Winter Park, Florida, just uh, a few minutes down the road in Orlando. As we start round five here between Jorge Cota and Udell Johnson, I tell you what, for our Super Walterway tournament here, our co features we couldn't have asked for anything more. John Jackson is very good. That's that awkward style, though, isn't it, Austin? Yeah, it is. He has a wide base, speed of lined up pretty straight. That can be partial right. He keeps uh, walking like he does. It's almost like a fence. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Left hand from Cota to tie up. 
Dakota tries to punch his way out of it. And now Johnson. Shot! Shot! Right! The corner. breaks him up. Another big left hand. They're both trying to left hands. It's interesting because they are both. Nice. You see a nice combination on both sides. Dakota Johnson comes back. They both like that long. Oh. Oh. Sticks Johnson twice to Jorge Cota. Another left to the head upstairs. And you can see Cota dipping that way. Nice. And then Palm with the jab trying to set up that overhand left. I mean, these are very shots. sneaky. These are shots, though, that normally they would drop guys. And they have. 22 yeah, of the 24 right. wins. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, stop, stop. Go behind the head, guys. Hey. Come on, let's go. Not a lot of defense here. As Johnson comes in, Dakota tries to separate himself. Stop. Again, I, I really think Johnson needs to go and best in that body. It stops the head movement. Not a lot of jabs between these two fighters tonight. A lot of power shots. Again, Cota staying in the southpaw hey, stance, hey. where he feels he's the most effective. I just checked my notes from the fighter meetings that we had with these guys. Herman Saicedo, his trainer, was translating for Johnson. He said his approach was going to be to go round by round, oh, stop, take his time stop. to win each round. I had to have Don't written hold. that down incorrectly. <laughs> There's no question about it. That's got to be a typo on my part. That has not been the case tonight. Nice shot from Johnson. Stop, stop. <laughs> what an amazing first five rounds. Full of action here between Johnson and Cota. Come back for round six oh, after the break. Time, time. Ay, ay, ay. Tell you what, if you're a boxing fan, you have to enjoy this tonight because these two guys are laying it all out there stop, on the stop, line. Guys, hey. As we start round six, there you saw a little bit of action there from round five. Jorge Cota, prototypical Mexican fighter, bringing it. No doubt about that. Yeah, but in between rounds, it looked like he was stop, fighting a little stop. bit of fatigue out there, Austin. It did. You know, his demeanor did say, say you know, I'm a bit tired, but. His demeanor does not say that right now. He's throwing a lot of good combinations. From Los Mochis, Mexico. And his trainer is Emmanuel Montiel. He is the father, obviously, of the former three-division champ, Fernando Montiel. Good. Yeah. Left from, from Johnson. Sure was. He bounces off Cota's head, and he's still there. And he is displaying a toughness tonight. Well, the champion, no he doubt. He throws an overhand left of his own. A lot of great fighters have come from Los Mochis. World champions, Humberto Soto, Jorge Arce. Stop, stop. Punch. Antonio DeMarco. Hey. Hey. And of course, Montiel. And at 27 years of age, Cota wants to follow in their footsteps. His first fight outside of his homeland in Mexico. His first time in the United States, as a matter of fact. And he measures up Johnson, touches him with a couple of left hands, and then Johnson comes right back. Nice oh, uppercut oh, from Udell Johnson. Oh, and Johnson right. now. Focusing exclusively on the uppercut. But then Cotto comes back with a four-punch combination. Well, as I told him in, uh, in the fighters' meetings, bienvenidos to America. We'd like to see a lot more of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, you can just hear the thunder, and we're inside. Stop, stop. Let go. 
punishing shots from both Johnson and Coda, and they are both walking through them. Stop, 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 stop. Johnson delivers stop, another uppercut. All right, Asimenios calls time here. Pushing and punching, one point. Oh, wow. wow. One point. One point, pushing wow. and punching. Wow. So Talese Asimenios takes a point Bounce. away from pushing and punching. We'll Is have there a more. warning? Well, I didn't see a warning. We'll have more on that when we come back here at Full Sail Live. Fran Charles alongside Fred Hickman and also Austin and no doubt Trout. Let's bring in Steve Farhood. Steve, what did you think there of a point being taken away for, from Johnson? I think it was rather unjust. Uh, early in the fight, Johnson was warned a couple of times for low blows, but I don't recall any warnings for holding and hitting. So to take a point away without any warnings, I didn't think the foul was that egregious that it warranted a point deduction. I think uh, the referee was a little unfair there. And in a fight this close, because both these fires are loading up on power, power punches, obviously that can end up having right, a huge right. effect. As we take a look at Steve Farhood's unofficial scorecard, so he has Johnson up by a point. Johnson would have been up by two points here without that point being taken away. It's so much at stake with uh, John Jackson awaiting the winner uh, at a future uh, premier boxing champion state. No, I agree with Farhood. I, I don't think he should have took a point. He, he didn't give him any warning beforehand. And not to mention, he doesn't speak any English, so you have to clearly give him the hand gestures and the warning. Yeah, that actually, that's an excellent point. Got a good one here at Full Sail Live. And Johnson slips. He misses there and then loses his balance. Do you, do you think the ref was trying to make up for missing the knockdown no no in the, the early round? It's a good question. Even so, that's still not fair. Will it make good call? All we're hearing is a bunch of thudding shots. As these guys <laughs> keep punching each other's ticket. That's why I want to let the, the punching do the talking. Do the talking <laughs> right here because this action is too good. So the folks at home can actually hear. Stop, stop, I mean, these are stop, bombs right? that are landing from both fighters. There's a good right hand, short to the point stop, stop. from Udell Johnson. Keep holding. No holding. At what point here now is we're in the, the seventh I round, know. Austin, because both these guys have, have made a, a legitimate attempt to rough up the body. Oh, nice double Good left shot. there from Coda. Tapped the midsection and then went back upstairs. But at what point do you think these, these body shots are going to start to have an effect? You know, I, I'm not sure. You know, these guys are in good shape. But the thing for Johnson, I think more than anything, touching the body sets up the head shots. So even if it's not investment for later rounds, it's, it's, it's going to pay off immediately. Don't punch. Don't punch. Well, seven rounds Don't in punch. in about to ten seconds as we end the seventh round, and there has been no slowdowns from either Ooh, Johnson or Coda as Johnson catches Coda there as we wrap up round seven. Boxing's next generation of champions start here on Bounce TV. There's a left hand by Bartholomew. Introducing premier boxing champions the next round. Oh, piston like uppercuts. Fighters on the brink of superstardom. Right Up and comers with big left hooks and knockout punches. Big shot, right on cue. Premier boxing champions the next round on Bounce TV. Still to come on Premier Boxing Champions, the next round here on Bounce TV. We've got a couple of undefeated Bantamweights that will fight for a title. Juan Carlos Cipiano going up against Rasheed Warren. It's a championship fight, and that is next after Johnson and Coda. As we're in round eight here of a scheduled 10 rounder. And another uh, fight that has been difficult to score. Oh. oh. Two left from Coda. Johnson comes right back, and then it's Coda again with a left hook. 
There has been no lack of chin on the part of either one of these guys tonight. None at all. This has been some serious leather. Spectacular action here. Good shot by both guys. Yeah, Johnson with a nice counter. That's right, after Coda landed two. There's that left hand That's from Johnson. Hey, we saw it early. Went away the last few rounds, and it makes its return much to the chagrin of Jorge Coda. Let it go. Let it go. Hey, stop! Don't punch! We got a little mouse under Dakota's right eye. And I, I think it's from that overhand left. Stop, stop, stop! All right, so Asimenios uh, warning Udell Johnson not to hit the back of the head. Oh, and it sure was, and they caught that mouse. So that's going to be something to keep our eyes on here. As you can see, oh, oh, down hand left. Down hand left. And Johnson looks like he's hurt, but then he comes back. Looked like he was staggered for a second. Right hand counter from Coda. Great action here in the eighth round. What a fight. These guys are walking through bullets. Johnson took about eight. Good shots. Absolutely. That and came right back with some ooh, good shots. Look at him now. Right on the button. Crowd coming alive here at Full Sail Live as both these fighters are leaving it all in the ring. You saw a good up close shot there of the mouse there under the right eye of Coda. Both hands down for Coda. I don't blame him. He's probably exhausted. Yeah, that, you got to call that one back. You sure do, oh, don't you? Five, Here's the six, shot that did it. Seven, Second knockdown eight, here for Udell Johnson. Second time he's been down in his career. Be great to get a, a second look at that. We'll take a, a look at the commercial after the, after the round. We'll take another look at that knockdown. And we come back. Look now at the uh, knockdown here. What do you think, knockdown or slip? Oh, yeah, it was a slip. Yeah, it's a slip. He didn't even hit him, yeah. see? And then in between the round, we saw the, the referee, Talese Asimenios. He got a towel and was wiping down the center of the ring. So it has been, it's been a great fight. There's been a lot of great action. Some missed calls as well. But, but there are also been, you said it, Austin, some missed calls. You got that. That was called a knockdown of the eighth. So as Steve astutely pointed out the last time we spoke to him that the judges have to see that as a knockdown. In the sixth round, we had a point taken away from Udell Johnson for, for pulling and punching. And then in the third round, stop, what stop, looked punch. to be a very close call as Dakota knocking down Johnson, it came right at the bell, right after the bell, and the referee said it came after the bell. So three different situations here. Yeah. All telling, it's a point swing and, one and way at, or the other. Yeah, and at the same time, maybe we should talk about getting the place. Because, you know, the big oh, left hand, that. and that one certainly rocked Johnson. No doubt three, he was able to stay four, on his feet. Five, but a knee touched the six, canvas. But if a knee touches seven, the canvas or a glove, hey, it's considered a knockdown. So it's the second yep. knockdown of the fight here for Jorge Cota. Keep in mind, Cota, 24-1 and one for his career, 22 knockdowns. All his 25 fights have been in Mexico, and we are getting our first look in the, in the United States And Jorge Cota. Folks, the power is for real. I don't know if it's Johnson's shoes or not, but he is having an awful time keeping his balance in the middle of the ring. You know, he is if slipping his a lot, you know. Adidas usually has really good grip. Maybe it's the canvas as well. A hole, right? A hole, right? Well, they're sprinkling, sprinkling it pretty good with their sweat out there, too. So. Yeah. Coming into this fight, Udell Johnson had been knocked down just one time. Stop, stop! And now here, Within a couple of rounds, back-to-back -back rounds, he's been knocked down twice. And bear in mind, this is a brand new ring. It's the first action I've seen. On oh, oh, nice right hand from Coda, and it sends Johnson down to the canvas. 
for the third time. The ref called it a, a slip. A slip. Wow, called that a slip. It looked like Johnson went down for the weight of the punch. And now he's go, trying go, to hold go, on go. as well. Let's go. And keep in mind, these, these are Florida fight rules. So three knockdowns and the fight's over. And Coda, with 15 seconds left, is trying to end it. Yeah, Johnson is hurt. That's definitely apparent. But he is holding on. Stop, 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 stop. Wow. Let him go, let him go. A number of close calls in this fight. Stop, stop. Wow. His legs is out. I mean, we, we'll have to get a look at that. The knockdown that knockdown again. That the, was the not second called knockdown. a knockdown. Yeah, we got to look at that second one again. I don't know. I, I think it was a slip, man. But but, again, but if he goes down from the from force a punch, of a punch, absolutely. even if he slips on the way down, it's it's still a knockdown. Yeah, his, he, his weight had given way. Yeah, it doesn't look like Johnson Here, Here's another look. Here's another look. Here's another look. That, yeah, look, okay, so that one was first ruled one. a knockdown. His feet came right up from, from underneath him. Th and that was his gloves went down to keep him up. Watch the feet. But yeah, that was a good. Look. That was a good shot, and that was a knockdown. Well, it's his I gloves. Agree. It's his gloves. I agree with the first But there's. The, let's go. If we have the replay of the other one here, let's see if if we get a shot. See, that's that's from the that's from the force of a punch. Nah, he, he that's looked, a right he missed, hook. Exactly. He, hook. he didn't miss the hook. No, I'm saying Johnson oh. missed the hook, and I think the weight Ladies made him fall this. from the miss. Momentum carried him. Momentum carried him and made him fall with that second one. I mean, it. it so. I tell you what. <laughs> but my man Johnson, he does not have his legs under him at well, all. Well, I'll tell you what. For whatever reason, you're right. And, and it's from the bunch of overhand lefts. Here's Steve yeah. Farhood's uh, unofficial scoring card presented by the new film straight out of Compton. And Steve has it now, 85 to 83 for Jorge Cota. Hey, stop, don't punch. Don't punch. Don't punch. And a reminder, we have Florida rules here for this fight. And with Florida rules... Uh -oh. Three knockdowns and the fight's over. So if Cole is able to get Johnson to go down here. Oh, check that. Okay, three knockdowns and one round. Steve Farhood's going to clarify that for me. Three knockdowns and one round. I, I was shocked when I came here to Florida and heard there was a three knockdown rule. In effect, it's a rule that's not used almost anywhere else. And those three knockdowns do have to happen in one round. Gotcha, okay. I'll tell you one thing, it'd be a crying shame if that missed knockdown cost Cota this fight. That'd be tough. Stop! Don't punch! Don't tough punch. to take. Absolutely. Because that, that, you know, when someone takes it from you, it's, it's on error of their part. It's hard to live with. What a fight Stop. Stop. Uh, between Ore Cota and Udell Johnson. Both these guys have given their all here. And... John Jackson awaits the winner here. And I'll tell you what, John Jackson, either way, right, is right, going to have his hands full, Absolutely. no doubt. Absolutely, it's going to be a great fight for the, for the finals of this tournament. Talk about styles making fights. Whoever stop, comes out stop. of this thing, that's going to be a great clash. Well, we had questions about a oh, and oh, his opposition that he's faced. Oh, and once again, Coda catches Johnson, and Johnson his weight propels him forward, but then Johnson continues to do work. He's leaning on Cota because I don't think he's got his legs under him. There's a minute left. I don't want this fight to end. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, been, it's been so electric. Overtime. That's right. <laughs> Although I don't know if Cota and Johnson will agree with me. Yeah, right. Cota winds up with big roundhouse shots. I tell you what, Cota has great marksmanship. You know, he's very accurate with those punches. And right now, 30 seconds left here. Tell you what, the sold out crowd here at Full Sail Live has been treated to quite the event. Blistering right hand from Jorge Cota, and now he tries to finish the deal with 15 seconds left. Johnson looks like he's spent out of his feet, but he's still punching. He's still up. Oh my and God. Cota continues What's, to throw. What is holding this guy up? That's how you know he's in shape. When the mind's gone, his legs still stayed up. Standing ovation in here at Full Sail University. Time, 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 time. Go back to your phone now.
What a fight. What, what a, a fight. fight. What a fight. Unbelievable. As the crowd rises to its feet here at Full Sail Live on the grounds of Full Sail University. Jorge Cota and Udell Johnson literally left it all inside the ring. We'll get the official decision of this thunderous bout when we come back. Tell you what, it was great to see the crowd rise to its feet and give these two guys a standing ovation. It's unbelievable these two guys are even, uh, they have the power to still smile after the battle that they just waged. CompuMont's final stats here. So total punches about the same, and the punches landed. Cota landed 16 more. The majority of those had to be power shots. Cota landing at a 34% connect rate. All right, time now for the official uh, decision. Before we do that, actually, let's uh, take a look now at uh, Steve Farhood's scorecard presented by the new film Straight Out of Compton. And so you have Coda winning by three. Does Steve. And time now for the official decision. And for that, we send it over to Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, Thomas Nardone has the ball at 95-92. And judges Alex Levin and William Ray have the bop the same 96-91 for your winner by unanimous decision, Jorge Demonio Cota. So there it is. So Jorge Cota wins by unanimous decision. And so uh, the judges agree with uh, Steve Farhood as well. And I tell you what, outside of a, uh, a couple of points here or there, we had the, the point taken away there in the sixth round. We had the third round knockdown that wasn't considered a knockdown. And, and, and it was potentially after the bell. So, And then we had one in the eighth round that counted, one in the ninth that it didn't. So lots in that 10 round bout, no doubt. Time now for our final thoughts, brought to you by the new film, Straight Outta Compton. And for that, and that fight was, it was so juicy. Awesome, we gotta take a look <laughs> back here. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look back at the highlights, so there's a lot of. Here's the third round at the end of the round. I'll tell you what, Coda told us that he was gonna come and present a good fight. He came to fight and throw punches. And I'm telling you something, I think that we may see, have seen a potential star born tonight. Uh, I tell you what, I definitely would like to see him fight again. And yes. as, a, as a fellow super welterweight, I'm looking forward to getting big money to fight somebody like Coda. Well, you saw the point <laughs> being taken away. And there you see the uh, left hand there from Coda that floor Johnson. This was considered a slip. It was not considered a knockdown. And, you know, let's give uh, Asimenios also, I mean, give him some credit because it, it was tough in, in, a, in a lot of different ways, Fred.